Time to bring you news on this channel. I am Umudu Gajaga and thank you for joining us. First, our headlines. A Gambian clinician scientist has one of the highest honours bestowed on him by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The Gambia Ports Authority hands over a huge dividend check to the government. We find out how much. A five-day free eye treatment for cataract patients is underway at the Ibn Sena Clinic in Bakote. For more on these and other stories, stay tuned. Welcome and thank you very much if you're just joining us. This is QTV News. A Gambian clinician scientist has been awarded Honorary Knight Commander of the Order of the British Empire, KBE, by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. I visited Dr. Tumani Kora earlier today and this is the report. Professor Sa Tumani Kora, a consultant physician whose field of research include the study of infectious diseases, is Director of the African Research Excellence Fund and Director of African Research Development Medical Research Council. Best known for his exemplary work in the field of medicine and paving the way for the next generation of African and Gambian scientists. Professor Tumani Kora's servers have now been recognized by one of the most distinct figures, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. I was really humbled and proud of to... Uh be awarded the degree of the Knight Order of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire for services done to health research in West Africa and also for my contributions to capacity development in Africa and globally. Dr. Kora first went to Russia for further education after completing high school in the Gambia. He later studied clinical skills at the University College Ibadan in Nigeria. Knowing his passion for medicine, he continues to pursue his career path, training at the Royal College of Physicians as a chess physician in Edinburgh. After obtaining his MRCP, he was appointed consultant physician. I'm inspired by my mother who, who shared everything she had with neighbours, no matter how little, and also always told us, you are not doing well enough, keep working hard, I want to see more come out of you. I often wondered why my mother shared the very little things she had those days with neighbors until I came across a quote from Martin Luther King which says, every day we wake up, we must think about what we can do for others. And I always think about that. That's my driving principle. When I wake up, I say to myself, what can you do this morning? How can you help others? And that's been the driver behind my achievements. Despite the promise of a huge pay, and better opportunities at the time, Dr. Cora returned to the Gambia in 1982 as clinician at the MRC the Gambia. A year later, he started his PhD on the immunology of tuberculosis. His work was groundbreaking, for he undertook one of the first trials of immunotherapy for this disease in Africa. Well, TB is my research area. I've always tried to see what I can do to improve TB management globally. Uh, in the early days, you probably don't know this, but treatment for TB was for 18 months. And uh, this became short to six months. So I thought six months was short, but not short enough. Just imagine if you had a headache and your doctor prescribed the paracetamol and told you to take it two tablets three times a day for five days. After two days, you felt better. You stopped taking it. So imagine having to continue regular treatment for six months. Among his many honors of Dr. Cora are Fellowship of the West African College of Physicians, the award of his PhD, and Fellowship of the Royal College of Physicians, UK. In 2002, while president-elect of the AACP, he was appointed acting director of the MRC Laboratories, and in 2004, he was made unit director and chairman of the executive management board. Joint medal winner, International Medical Informatics Association. Member of the Scientific Advisory Board, Center for HIV and AIDS Vaccine, amongst others. A check for $20 million was paid to government on Friday as dividend by the Gambia Ports Authority, GPA, through its management board. Alu witnessed the event at the Ministry of Finance in Banjul, and he now reports. 
this year's dividend saw an increment of $15 million on the $5 million paid last year. Ports officials say the presentation comes as the performance of the GPA is improving as anticipated, although some challenges remain in terms of improving infrastructure to sustain the efficiency of the ports. Usman Jobate, managing director at the Gambia Ports Authority, found the government and the GPA board for the support of the ports being a catalyst to the social economic development of the country. Um, it is a statutory obligation that uh, being an SOE that is wholly owned by government, uh, the performance of the enterprise at the end of the year were obliged to pay dividend to government. Port efficiency directly translates to affordability in terms of commodities for the livelihood of all Gambians. So we are committed and we are alive to our mandate that we are wholly owned by government and we need to provide a service deemed to be expedient to the public interest and uh, also try to sustain and improve operations of the port and take care of our human resource base. In presenting the check, Alu Seka, Chief Executive Officer of the Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry and a board member of GPA, reaffirmed the board's commitment to continue to engage the government to improve service delivery at the ports. The last few years have been quite exciting, although we recognize the huge challenges that we have. Hence the reason why the master port program, the master plan, um, has been um, updated. Um, the previous board has worked diligently together with government and management to ensure that um, the future of the port is sustained, not only for today, but um, really um, with the expected expansion um, and growth in both um, port operation and economic um, activities in the Gambia. The transit of goods to the, um, to the neighborhood and ECOWAS is growing. We hope it can even grow further. Uh, we hope um, that we can not only import more containers, but we will export more commodities as well, so that the port will also expand its operations and serve um, its purpose. Mamburi Njai, the Gambia's Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs, was a happy man as he commended the GPA management and board for their good work. Today marks another historic day in the partnership between the government of the Gambia and the Gambia Post Authority. Let me begin by saying that not only the GPA is one of the best performing SOS for the past decade, but also one of the most compliant in terms of taxes. This year's dividend payment by the GPA illustrates the unlimited potentials in the Port Authority revenue generation capacity. The dividend payment of 20 million this year is at a historic proportion compared to 5 million paid last year, increasing by four folds. The government, he said, is very much aware of the need to support the transformation of the ports to match modern-day international trade facilities. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alou Sise. A five-day free eye treatment for cataract patients is underway at the Ibn Sina Clinic in Bakote. The operation is being conducted by Direct Aid Gambia Office in collaboration with al Basha International Foundation and the Ministry of Health. QTV Zanzumana Eso Nyasi was at the clinic and this is his report. With the objective of providing support in the form of free medical treatment for eye patients, direct aid and partners have commenced their annual treatment program. Officials say thousands of Gambians benefited from the treatment since the commencement of this program 25 years ago. Fakuruddin Dakan, camp manager of Albasa International Foundation, says his organization's main objective is to free the world from avoidable causes of blindness. He adds that they provide therapeutic, preventive and educational programs to manage blindness and visual impairment in developing countries. In this particular camp, inshallah, that has started from today, we are planning to check as much as 5,000 patients and we have a target of operating about 500 cataract blind patients. Mambanda of Manjai Kunda and Basamba Drame of Dipakunda are among the patients due to receive free eye operations on Friday. This is the second time I will be benefiting from this foundation. They treated my right eye last year and the operation was very successful. 
so I am here again to operate on my left eye. I can't thank them enough. They are very professional and their treatment is free. I wish to also thank Direct Aid because without them, this wouldn't have been possible. For five years now, I have been struggling to find treatment for my eye. It has been a very painful experience and I almost lost hope. Thankfully, God has intervened. The treatment is free and I am urging those with eye problems to try and come here. I really appreciate everything. Ansumana Kinte is Direct Aid Communications Officer. He calls on anyone experiencing eye problems, especially cataract patients, to visit the Ibn Sina Clinic in Bakote. We are go, uh, calling on all and sundry, be them a family member, a relative, a neighbor, to come out in their numbers. This is a golden opportunity that is given to them. Everything here that they are going to receive from this project is free of charge. Everything has been paid for by direct aid. And we, uh, we are calling on all to come out. Don't miss the opportunity that is offered to them. Everybody who knows anyone who may be suffering from this, just by a word of mouth, please spread the rumor to them that this team of professionals are here and are here only for one objective, is to treat those people who are having eye defects, especially cataract. This five days eye treatment camp will end on the 15th of January. Antoine is a for QTV News. We will now go with a short commercial break and when we return, the Ministry of Transport clarifies the rules and regulations around the interstate transport permit between the Gambia and Senegal. And as the International Day of Persons with Disabilities was commemorated, we hear what challenges are still faced by people with disabilities. Join us after the break for these stories and more. It's a start of a new decade and QCell brings you a new and improved 4G MiFi router. You can connect up to 32 devices, yes, 32 devices with the new MiFi router and enjoy the fastest internet service in the Gambia. So go get it now at any of our QCell customer care centers for just $2,500 and subscribe to our ongoing 4G Mega Data promo. For more information, call QCell customer care on 111. QCell, soon you boss, we innovate, orders follow. Welcome back and thank you very much if you're just joining us. This is QTV News. The Ministry of Transport, Works and Infrastructure on Friday organized a press conference to clarify for the public the requirements and limitations of the interstate transport permit between the Gambia and Senegal. Malik Nyang attended the conference and this is his report. The interstate transport permit seeks to facilitate cross-border passenger vehicle movement between the Gambia and Senegal in line with the two countries' road transport agreement signed during the Presidential Council meeting in March 2018. The Minister of Transport, Works and Infrastructure by Lyman Job said, The permit allows member states to operate a vehicle registered in either country to have free movement of people and goods. He further spoke about the permit's requirements. Applicants must complete an application form with proof of ownership a valid vehicle license and registration, a valid vehicle testing certificate, a valid ECOWAS brown card, uh, a valid national driving license, proof of insurance, and upon payment of a non-refundable application fee of $100. The minister also said that successful applicants are required to pay depending on the capacity of the vehicle they intend to operate. For 40 passengers and above, the fee is $5,000. Between 30 and 39 passengers and above, $4,000.
below 30 passengers, 3,000 dollars. That is for the permit. The permit shall be valid for a renewable period of two years. Designated routes in and out of bound are as follows. Banyul, Bara, Karang, Kaulak, Dakar. Banyul, Seliti. Farafenye, Kaulak, Dakar. Farafenye, Binyona, Siganjor. Base, Banyara, Vilingara. These are the designated routes. On the regulation of the permit, the minister said the document will be issued in the Gambia by the Ministry of Transport, Works and Infrastructure, and in Senegal by their Ministry of Transport, with the Corridor Management Committee assisting issuing authorities in overseeing the issuance of the permit and DISC. The minister said law enforcement agents will also be made aware of the rules and regulations to better understand the permit while carrying out their duties. The president of the Gambia National Transport Union, Omar Sisse, says, it is very important for Gambian drivers to drive beyond their borders as drivers from other countries do. He spoke about the importance of the permit. Today, if you want to go to Trans Senegal, you, have, you need to have a lot of transport from, here, from destination to destination. And you're going to cost you a lot. But if this uh, interstate road transport permit is concerned, you can uh, board a vehicle, any garage, within the uh, municipality to go to your final destination. Like for example, Gambia here, you can go to Brikama, pick vehicle to Dakar, you can go to Bundung, pick vehicle to Dakar, you can go to Manu, pick vehicle to The press conference also featured representatives from the Gambia Port Authority, the Gambia Police Force, and the Senegalo Gambia Secretariat, amongst others. Malik Nyang, for QTV News. International Day of Persons with Disabilities was commemorated on Friday by the Gambia Federation for the Disabled. The event, celebrated annually on the 3rd of December, was used by stakeholders to discuss pertinent issues persons with disabilities faced in the Gambia. Mamudula Choi reports. It is a commemoration that brings together persons with disability to discuss their challenges for possible solutions after a march past they gather at the youth monument discussing problems facing them which range from legislations, health care, education, employment and transportation. The chairman of the Gambia Federation for the Disabled, Mohamed Krubali, took the government to task for failing to table the disability bill which was drafted in 2012. The disability bill intends to promote respect, protection and promotion of the rights of persons with disability. Mr. Krubali is asking why the bill is being delayed despite several follow-up meetings with government. If these bills, other bills, were successful before the National Assembly, very quickly and easily, why not the disability bill? Is the government of the Gambia really condemning the rights of persons with disabilities to be respected, promoted and protected? Or is it that the Gambia government does not actually respect the rights and freedoms of persons with disabilities? All these are questions that really need to be answered. The chairman of the Gambia Federation for the Disabled calls on the government to offer scholarships to persons with disabilities and not to reject their application by comparing their academic performance with those who are highly privileged. As far as Mohamed Krubali is concerned, the Gambia government has failed to address their challenges. In fact, he said it in Mandinka, he said, Land your soul, Manjina Lade, Alpha Nanjandaka, Rice Soul Bay, and Jolla Commentel Nyandaka, and Jo Nyami. But the question also that follow will be since President Barrow has made such a statement, at least convincing persons with disabilities, has he done anything positive for us to realize those rights to be respected? I will answer in my op honest opinion and say no. So this time around President Barrow, the chairman is really reminding you of your statement so that you can come back and give us that utmost and unflinching support so that we can realize that we are really equal in this particular country. World Bank statistics show that persons with disabilities represent at least 15% of the world's population. Been to jetted legal and policy assistant of Article 19, says that persons with disabilities tend not to benefit from equal representation in society. Economic and social exclusion is a part of the daily lives of persons with disabilities. 
and it's a breach of human rights and a major development challenge. Employment opportunities for the persons with disabilities in the Gambia are far from satisfactory. Mohamed Amen Kamara is disappointed with this situation. He tells QTV that even after bagging a degree from the University of the Gambia in 2017, he still struggles to find employment. He reminds the Gambia government that persons with disabilities are also citizens. There are people who are employed in different sectors of this country that we are far more better than them in terms of anything you can think about. Disability doesn't mean inability. There's nothing wrong with our brains. We can think, we can write, we can suggest, we can do anything that poor people are doing. So what next? If they marginalize us, this society will marginalize us. And this is what is happening. At this event, the Gambia Federation for the Disabled expressed its commitment to continue engaging authorities to address their challenges which also include proper health care and user-friendly access to buildings and transportation facilities. Mohamed Lamin Choi, QTV News. The Gambia Tourism Board on Friday signed a memorandum of understanding with the Diaspora Club to strengthen the relationship between the country and Gambians in the diaspora. Babu Karsi has more. Among other things, the MOU seeks to build a strong relationship between the two institutions in promoting the country's image to the wider world in order to attract tourists to the smiling coast all year round. The Director General of the Gambia Tourism Board, Abdullah Haidara, said the key factor to the MOU is to seek support from Gambians in the diaspora to help sell the positive image of the country. Gambia's goodwill ambassadors wherever you are, let's transcend beyond our respective countries that we reside. Wherever a single Gambian is residing, individually or collectively, please be known that you are a goodwill ambassador of the country, the Gambia, in tourism. We all integrate through tourism. Tourism is a catalyst that can develop our economy, that can develop our country, that can develop our people individually and collectively. So we have a common goal, we have a common objective. The president of the Gambia Diaspora Club, Ibrahim Kujabi, said the opportunities are huge and a lot can be achieved. I think even with either tourism or in any sector of, uh, of the country, I think us as Gambians, whatever we, uh, whatever we can contribute that would show the country in good light, I think every, everybody should be, every Gambian should step up to the opportunity. And presenting this opportunity for us, I think, also empowers us um, to be able to go into uncharted territories, to be able to actually even be able to showcase some of the work that you guys do, and also be an outlet for uh, GTB outside of the Gambia. Hadi Maliglo, the outgoing president of the Gambia Diaspora Club, said the club was instituted three years ago to unite Gambians in the diaspora and help support the country's socio-economic development. We unite to party for a special purpose and that purpose is to help our country in the to help in the development of our country to reach the level that we have suffered for 22 years we looked around did our research and we chose the healthcare system last year we were able to transform the children's ward which is now named after the diaspora club and uh, you can go there today and see for yourself. You can go to any hospital in the Western Wall, and it would be in the same level. Tens of thousands of Gambians living in the diaspora have been contributing immensely to the socio-economic development of the country. In 2019, over $300 million in remittances was contributed by Gambians in the diaspora, according to the Deputy Director of Foreign Operations Department of the Central Bank of the Gambia, Babu Karsi, QTV News. Before we end this news bulletin, let's have a quick look at our main news stories. A Gambian clinician scientist has had one of the highest honours bestowed on him by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The Gambia Ports Authority handed over a huge dividend cheque to the government. A five-day free treatment for cataract patients is on the way at Ibn Sina Clinic in Bakote. That's all we have for you on tonight's news edition. Join us tomorrow for more news. Bye for now.